Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about performance and optimization by understanding vertex count. Now, it doesn't matter what modeling package you're using. You could be using 3ds Max, Blender, Maya, whatever you want. As long as you have a prerequisite understanding of mesh normals for smoothing or hardening edges, and as long as you have an understanding of unwrapping for texturing and unwrapping for light mapping, you should be fine. Now, just the same, it doesn't matter what game engine you're using, but I'll be covering Unreal and Unity. Now, why should we care about vertex count in the first place? The thing is, regardless if you're doing a mobile game or if you're doing some sort of high-end PC game, there's still usually limitations on what you can draw to the screen or what your device can process. And sometimes your vertex count can become an issue or a bottleneck. So understanding how your vertex counts add up is very important. So in Maya, I've made a few examples here, and these are all spheres, and technically, they all have the same geometry. And as far as we know, they all have 382 points, 382 vertices. But the way the game engines and GPUs read the vertices are not that simple. So in this first case, this model is all smooth. There's no hard edges, and it doesn't have any UVs. So this isn't going to contribute at all. This isn't going to change the vertex count it should be 382 in the game engine. Now with this next one, it has a hard edge. Wherever we have hard edges, this is going to contribute to the vertex count. So in this next model, it's gonna be a little bit, but in this third model, every single face has been hardened. So this is going to be significantly increased. The vertex count is gonna be a lot more. Now over in this next set, we have UVs added. And just like hard edges, with a UV, wherever you have a UV seam, this is also going to contribute to the vertex count. Now, what if you have a hard edge and you have UVs? The way that it works is that your hard edges and your UVs don't stack. Wherever they're different though, that's where we're gonna get more of a vertex increase. So if your hard edge is exactly the same as your UV seams, you won't incur any more of a vertex count. Now, if they are very different, Right, so this one has a hard edge all along here, but every single UV is blown apart, you're gonna get a significant increase in vertex count. Now, just like I said before, if we have all hard edges and all of our UVs are blown apart, that's pretty much the same thing. Your UV cost isn't going to increase, but this is still going to be a high vertex cost. Now, in a lot of cases, we'll have one unwrap for our texturing, and then we'll have a second unwrap for our light map. So it's kind of just the same as the hard edges and just the UV. If your second UV is different from your first one or the seams are different from your hard edge, you're gonna have an increase in vertex count. Like on this last one, this second UV channel is all blown apart versus the first one, it's stitched together for the most part. So you're gonna incur all that vertex cost because of this second UV. Now in some cases, your light map might be exactly like your texture on wrap but that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you need to lay your light map out different than how you laid out your texture. Now for this last example, I've put vertex colors on these models. Vertex colors are a type of data that you can store on your vertices that later in your game engine you can utilize. Typically we'll use it through a shader so that we can do vertex blending or maybe you wanna do some sort of world position offset or some sort of cheap animation. Now people usually think that vertex color will add to the vertex count, it can add to the memory cost, but not the vertex cost. So now let's go take a look at these in Unity and in Unreal. So in Unity, the way that we can see our vertex count is by coming to our model and we wanna open it up. Now, we don't wanna click on the models, we wanna click on the meshes. And when we click on the meshes, over in the inspector, we can see the vertex count. So for our first one, we have vertices 382. That's exactly what we said. So it doesn't have any UVs and it doesn't have any hard edges. So it's no more than what the geometry is. Now with the second one, we do have a hard edge. So it's going to increase a little bit. It's 402 in this case. Now the next one is where we have all hard edges. And this is 1,500. So your hard edges can add up a lot. Now in the next one, we don't have any hard edges, but we do have a UV seam that's running down along the side. So it did increase a little bit from that 382 to 439. And now the next one has the same UV, 
but it has a hard edge. So this is also going to increase to 460. Now for the next one, the UVs are all blown apart. So we're gonna get this maximum count of 1,560. And for the last one, we have all hard edges and all the UVs are blown apart. So it's no different. It's still that 1,560. Now for our two UV sets, for this first one, our UVs are exactly the same and there's no hard edges here. So we do have this low cost of 439, but our second one with our two UVs, the second UV channel is blown all apart. So we have this high cost of 1,550. Now over in Unreal, it's pretty similar. So the way that we can see our UV costs in here is either by hovering over our model, you can see the vertices, or we can open our model up. And you can see the same information here where it says vertices. So pretty much the same. The first one is 382, and then we have 402, and 1560. So these are pretty similar. Sometimes they'll be slightly different, but for the most part, they're the same. Now there's an added layer to understanding vertex cost when our models are in the game engine or when they're actually in a scene. So the way that we usually measure performance is by frames per second. And typically we'll have something like 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now within each one of those frames, there's a whole bunch of different passes that can happen depending on how you set things up. So how do we see that? So how do we see the vertex cost? Since I'm in Unreal, we'll take a look at that first. And the way that we do it in Unreal is by holding down Control Shift on the keyboard and hitting comma. And this will open up your GPU visualizer. Now, it's nice that this one who opened up, but what's more important is that if we come over to our output log, you can see that there's a whole bunch of information that was just printed out here. And what's of note is all the way at the top, we'll see 100%, and if we come over, we can see that with all of these spheres in the scene, it's 37,465. Now, that sounds like a lot more than what we expected. Only some of these added up to 1,500 something. So why would we get to this? And that's because of all the different passes that are happening. Now, every time we go through these passes, our models and our UVs will be used again. And they stack on top of each other. They're added to each other. They're added to each other depending on the pass. So we can keep scrolling through here and we can see the different passes and how these verts add up. So there's this occlusion test where there were 72 verts. There's this shadow depths pass where there was 18,232. There's the shadow projection, which was 12 verts. So you can kind of see how all of these verts add up now and how they can compound on top of each other. Now, just the same, if we come back on over to Unity, the way that we can see the scene vert count is by coming to the game view and we want to open up the stats window. You can see in here that there's a vert count, 27,700. And now, while not exactly the same, it's pretty close. And if you wanted to see a little bit more of a breakdown, the way that we do that in Unity is by coming to Window, Analysis, and we want to come to Frame Debugger. And now you can either do this while you're playing the game, or you can just do this with your editor open. But you want to click on Enable. And now this is going to be very similar to that readout that we had before. Similar, not exact. So if we open this up, you can see all of the stages that one frame is going through. And if you want to see how the verts start to add up, you can take this slider, pull it all the way down. And as you slowly tick this up, you'll see that the verts start to add up. So we have 4.5K, all of a sudden we have 13. Now we have 22.6, 27, 27.7. So this should start to give you a pretty good understanding of how vertex counts work and how they add up. So if you guys like this kind of thing and you'd like to see more, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.